Welcome back. Here's what I'm always obsessed with in American politics, how generations vote. And when I mean generations, X, Z, millennials, boomers, more, you've got it. Here with the big board because we have some fascinating new data from our uh, NBC pollsters. They dug into a decade's worth of results from our poll to examine the political evolution across generations over the last 10 years. So let me show you here. We got Gen X and millennials. Both were around to vote in 2012. Uh, and they're around today. And as you can see, uh, in their 20s and 40s, uh, this is the way Gen X was voting, D plus 7 in 2012, millennials, D plus 16. Ten years later, as they get into their 40s and 50s, late 30s and uh, 50s, look at what you're seeing, Gen X becoming a Republican generation here, R plus 12, millennials uh, moving slightly to the right here, still a Democratic constituency, but just D plus six. But right now, this is something that Republicans ought to be concerned about, because look at this gap among Gen Z. Obviously, they've only been voting, some of them really, 2020, 2022, but D plus 31 in here. Obviously, even over time, if you see that millennial, millennials started at a D plus 16, Gen Z starting at a D plus 31. That is something, if you're a Republican, this ought to scare you these days. Joining me now to discuss the generational divide even more, our senior political editor, Mark Murray, my uh, partner in writing uh, the daily Meet the Press First Read newsletter, and John Della Volpe. He's the director of polling at the Harvard Kennedy School Institute of Politics. He's an NBC News contributor, and he's been specializing in polling young voters for quite some time. Mark, I, what's interesting with the data is that actually there's, there was sort of an old political cliche, right, that, you know, uh, you're, you're liberal when you're young and you get more conservative as you get older. And certainly with Gen X and millennials, that pattern seems to be holding. Yeah, Chuck, and to me is really the Gen X that really stands out the most there. The biggest change, a 19-point swing overall going from a, a D plus 7 now to R plus 12 in congressional preference from 2012 to 2022. And, you know, yes, I think there is this, like, you know, do you end up getting a little bit more conservative and more Republican-leaning the older you get, you get your 401k, or because do you end up because you end up voting for people uh, early on in your life, do you continue to vote for that particular party? And yeah. our poll shows, at least with you know with Gen with Gen X, yeah. that they are voting when it comes to like, hey, I'm actually getting a little bit older and a little more conservative. Yeah, it's interesting, John. I want to go to the millennial uh, uh, numbers there because you not millennial, excuse me, the uh, Gen Z, I guess. Uh, then there's the millennial, but we'll get into that in, in a second which is this massive gap. I mean, 31 points in one election cycle, you know, that, you know, even if you have the, quote, natural evolution, if they go this, you know, that's that still means that's going to be a pretty left-leaning generation, perhaps for decades to come. That's right, Chuck. And they already have made a difference. I argue that I don't think we've got Biden in the White House, nor do we have a nor did Demi nor would we have such a narrow margin for Kevin McCarthy, if not for both the turnout as well as a very strong Democrat preferences mm -hmm. for this young member for the youngest members of our cohort, Generation Z. Chuck, this is a generation that has grown up and never seen kind of America at our best or America United. They've seen um, not a lot of peace. They've felt insecure from the moment they went to school. And I think we're seeing them kind of become very active in trying to change a system um, in all ways possible. And right now, clearly, their values are aligned much yeah. more with progressives and much more Democrats. Millennials and Gen Z, Mark, you know, millennials, their coming of age is the Clinton era. Uh, and the Clinton era certainly, you know, ended awkwardly. And then there's 9-11 and then there's, you know, they had their, and, and, it, and then it's been worse for Gen Z, yeah. right? Like, um, how much of the electorate do they represent now? Just yeah. those two groups? Well, so it's actually Gen Z. Our pollsters found it was 9% of the electorate. Right. And you ended up having millennials. You're getting close into the 30s. That's actually growing. So together, yeah, this is more than yeah, a third of the electorate. Yeah, right? and so then all of a sudden, you know, the silent generation as well as the, the boomers are getting smaller as part of the electorate that our poll ends up showing. But, Chuck, I actually think you nail it. You know, you and I are both members of Gen X, and we were in our 20s before 9-11. We before won the, the Cold War right. when we went to college. Right. Like, it was, wait, America's. Right. 
just winning. Right. We, we were right. They're wrong. Right. Yeah. And we were, you know, in our 20s, uh, having our first jobs before the Iraq war and the pathing, yeah. before the Great Recession. If you're a millennial or also Gen Z, all that you have seen is either the Iraq war when you were really, really young or an infant. Yeah. Uh, you ended up seeing the Great Recession, the Donald Trump presidency, which I would argue when we look at these Gen Z numbers, this was their first election yeah. to participate in. And I do wonder if Donald Trump, for all the effect yeah. that he's had on Republicans, has also affected the youngest generation. John, I have a pet theory, and it's just a pet theory that, that will take a lot of social scientists, and, I, and I'm hoping one day to get the time to, to study this. But I think about the fact that the boomers uh, became more, as they got older, became more nostalgic, and they ended up voting like Eisenhower Republicans. And you have Gen X, right? Our, my formative years were the Reagan era. Um, millennials, the formative years of the Clinton area. Zelen Gen Z, the formative years of the, uh, are the Obama era. How important is that to future voting, in your opinion? I think it's incredibly important. And I think people do carry those values during their first political experience. It's, mm -hmm. it's what we call the, co the cohort effect. And I think beyond the Obama era, Chuck, it's the Obama to Trump. It's that whiplash mm -hmm. between no drama Obama to Trump. And what I found for now 22 years studying this at the Institute of Politics is that young people participate and they vote when they see a tangible difference in their participation. And that's what I think really kind of um, coalesced kind of Gen Z. They could see the tangible difference of Donald Trump. Walls were going up. People were not allowed to go into the country, et cetera, et cetera. And that really, a lot, that's a negative partisanship along mm -hmm. with, I think, the, 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 the movement around Parkland and Floyd, et cetera. I think the combination of those two things have had a significant effect on this generation, which I believe they will hold over the decades to come. I mean, we just put up some numbers here. Nearly 50% of Gen Z identify as a self-described liberal. The number never crossed 40 back in the day for Gen X or for during that era, or even the boomers. I mean, it does feel like, you know, the boomer, if you look at the boomers, say, late 60s, early 70s. Well, and Chuck, this also is putting pressure on the Democratic Party, too. You know, we've actually been following over the last several years the progressive turn for Democrats. And those numbers actually explain why. If you're actually a Democratic Party leader and you see this is the newest generation, you know this is going to be a progressive party. It's hard actually to go back to be, hey, let's be the moderate neoliberal political party when these are your, your, your going to be your base voters over the next several election cycles. And, John, you know, it's funny. You look at it this way and you say, well, of course someone with the last name of Clinton had a hard time winning over Gen Z. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to her, but it is, it, you know, maybe she didn't fit the moment on that side. Well, therefore, she needs to work especially hard, right, yeah. to... to to prove herself and to listen and to kind of engage with this generation. I think that, you know, certainly the, the Biden administration, Democrats, I think for the first time, I've been at this for 22 years, as I said, are beginning to really understand that and to change not only their policies, but their politics to appeal to this to this generation. Now, I think the point about millennials is, is important, which is why I think, you know, anyone who wants to kind of further connect with this generation, we need to see more on, on housing policy and politics. Yeah. We need the same thing on child care, I think, as well. Well, and one reminder here, Mark, uh, Gen X is the smallest of the four generations we're talking about, right? The boomers are huge. Millennials are huge. Gen Z's big. Gen X, part, part of it is the definition people give to Gen X to shrink it. But that's a, that's, that's a pet peeve of mine. Everybody's a boomer uh, as far as, you know, everybody wants to be included there. But, you know, Republicans can't take comfort in Gen X moving toward them because of that Zillennium number. Well, in going back, you know, Chuck, when you and I were both growing up, you know, Ronald Reagan actually won the youngest voters at, at that election cycle. Right. Of course, it was smaller. The, we're, they were the first Gen X voters. We're, we're now like two decades in the Democrats continue to win younger voters. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it becomes unsustainable for a political party. And then when you look at our numbers, that these youngest voters, Gen Z, are D plus 31. Yeah. I do think that that, to me, is maybe one of the biggest political forces we have moving forward over the next 20, 30 years. It really is. It, it, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, John Del Volpe uh, over at Harvard, you've been doing terrific work on this specific topic for, as you put, for decades. Uh, <laughs> and I think people are, 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 are appreciative of that. Mark, as always, sir, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.